On today's show, we have magician Rod Chow. Welcome to Magic Mike's Castle webcast and podcast. Internationally renowned magician Rod Chow is active in the Society of American Magicians International Assembly 272 as well as Local Assembly 95. Many of the Society of American Magicians local meetings take place in a building in Chinatown in Vancouver that the Guinness Book of World Records has deemed the world's narrowest building. Winner of many prestigious awards, Magician Rod Chow is available for your next function. For families, kids, and adults alike, Rod Chow is the magician to book for your next event. And we're back with magician Rod Chow. And uh, thank you so much for visiting us this day, Rod. It's my pleasure, Mike. It's, it's, sh- it's sure an honor to have you now. You have so many credentials. I snuck a peek at your website and you have something like more than 45 awards. I don't know if you've actually counted all your trophies and awards, but there's certainly more than 40, perhaps even more than 45. And that takes, I, I don't know if our audience out there realizes how much skill and uh, how much oh, uh, skill on so many levels, psychologically and um, from a dexterity perspective, uh, that all took. Um, can you share with us just some of the awards you've won and for what? Yes, uh, of course. Um, so I've won um, a lot of awards with um, starting off uh, in the local level. And then I went into the into the into the regional level, and then and then and then into the national level and the international level. So there's multiple levels of awards uh, in various categories, actually. So um, at the local level, I went through many of the categories, probably almost all of the categories of full sub uh, stage um, cards, and then um, I went in, in a, even comedy, and then in in the in, in the in the um, regional category. Uh, I actually started uh, honing my, um, my my money magic act, and I was taking that around and winning awards with that, and and uh, that was in full stuff and also in, in stage categories as well. So um, I started to develop that uh, with the help of uh, some of my magician colleagues, um, um, including um, Sean Farquhar, uh, who's my mentor, and Glenn Labar, who was my coach. And um, eventually, I actually, uh, after accumulating a year ball right, that's about over 40 awards. Uh, um, eventually, I actually won at the international level, uh, the Society of American Magicians, uh, top uh, award in close-up uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. So that was uh, quite an accomplishment. And so um, it's uh, been a progression, and uh, uh, I'm still... Um, uh, actively um, uh, working my my money ma- magic act and um, also developing some other new ideas as well for future uh, future performances. And you won this year. I attended a few of our meetings because um, unlike a lot of cities, unlike a lot of Canadian cities, we have three local magic clubs. We have um, a local assembly of the Society of American Magicians. I believe you are the vice president of it, and. And also, we've got two IBM's International Brotherhood of Magicians, and I, they all meld together with, uh, in my mind because uh, there's three a month, uh, three meetings a month. But I watched you compete in a couple of them, and I thought it was some of the most original. I'm not just saying this to be nice. I genuinely mean this, Rod. Um, I, I thought it was some of the most original magic I've ever seen and some of the most prettiest magic. And I don't know if I should give it away. I, I, I wish we could show a clip of it. Uh, it involved planets. That's all I'll say for now. And um, it, my eyes were popping out. It was, uh, I guess you could call it an eye-popping routine. Um, it, it was magnificent. And the second time I saw it, I believe you were competing again, um, you had actually honed it. You had actually technically did it uh, differently. We'll say differently. And it was 
if it could be, it was even better. So uh, I'm so excited about your magic and, and everything you do. Uh, the first time I, I met you, Rod, uh, I believe was more than 20 years ago. Uh, perhaps it was even 24 years ago. I, I joined the local SAM, Society of American Magicians. And again, my eyes popped out. Um, you did money magic and very few magicians um, I mean, a lot of magicians in the past have done money magic, but not like you, not using, and I'm going to get technical, but without revealing anything, because we have lay people out there, we have regular people, and we have magicians. You use some techniques that are not known to magicians, are not ordinary, uh, ordinarily used, and I'm watching this pretty magic done with money and anything and everything that's possible to be done with paper money you were doing. A lot of magicians, they use coin magic and that's beautiful, that takes so much dexterity, but you did paper magic. Uh, any particular reason why? Um, I think that's uh, what makes my act quite unique because it did feature all paper magic and in different forms and shapes and mutations and um, money was growing and changing um, it was uh, transforming, so it was not just straight um, uh, increasing of money, but uh, various uh, different uh, uh, things that actually made it quite spectacular. And it was was actually um, a number of different things put together in a theme routine, which is what um, I like to do. Is I like to theme it so that um, so that everything has a story to it. So there, basically, there was definitely beginning, middle, and end, and it all tied together, and um, uh, it basically it came to a very, uh, uh, very spectacular conclusion, which, um, I mean, I think all magic acts have to um, um, uh, end in the finale, so so it, the finale was great, and then, I, and then often I would take it back down to be more, uh, get more personal with the audience as well right at the end, so I'll take it full circle, basically, Absolutely. so, um, yeah. And so that's what it was, yeah. So, uh, very unique. Yeah, you're right. Back to back to back. Oh, I loved it. And and every time you perform, I look forward to it. When when I hear you're going to perform, right now, um, at this time and place, um, there's a pandemic happening. I, I don't enjoy mentioning that. I like to look at this as escapism. But let's face it, there, there's a pandemic happening. And, and we're getting to enjoy magic when perhaps we may not always get to enjoy magic. We get to go into people's living rooms uh, and perform. We, in turn, as magicians, get to see other magicians perform. And I, I always love, I, I look forward to seeing uh, your magic. And in fact, we just recently had a meeting, I think it was the SAM, and you did um, a Halloween effect, um, which I loved. I was worried at first because it was, uh, at first blush, it was a little bit similar to what I was going to present, but it ended up not being. I thought, oh my goodness, here are things that look like bookmarks with, with uh, full color laminated um, uh, Halloween characters, we'll, we'll call them on there. And I got scared and I thought, oh no, oh good. Okay, we can always depend on Rod to do something original and, and, and eye popping as well and mind bending. I'm going to use a popular term called mind bending. Now you mentioned a few minutes ago, and I agree with you a thousand percent, but I'm also old school. Um, magic is theater and every good effect has a plot. Every good effect has a structure, a beginning, a middle, and an end or a conclusion. And uh, sometimes there's surprises in between, other things happen. But um, a lot of magic nowadays, and I'm just glad that there's magic out there on, on social media, but a lot of the magic I'm seeing th doesn't really have a structure. How do you feel about magic of today on social media? Are you enjoying it? Uh, if not, um, what's going on? How do you feel about it? Well, certainly there is a lot of magic on social media right now. And uh, a lot of it is actually quite visual, and it, it, it is actually because social media, uh, you want to um, cap capture that person's attention for, you know, they, you don't, I mean, if you don't capture that person's attention and hold them for just a few minutes, um, then you haven't done anything really in that interesting. So as long as they can do something hold for a few minutes, then that's fine. Not even a few minutes, maybe one or two minutes, like a short thing, it's even, even fine, right? So I, I don't mind those, those quick effects where it's just, purely visual and then 
uh, really there's no may not be a story. Uh, for a story, you definitely need to have a, uh, have a longer routine. And, and when you go into competition, which I have been doing, then definitely uh, you have a, a focused audience, and they're, they're they're sitting there, and they're a captive audience ready to actually listen and stay there. So they're not going to be like in social media. You can walk away from the from the computer, and uh, you don't know actually uh, that audience person is there or not there anymore. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to pause for, for a few moments and we'll be back with our very special guest, magician Rod Chow. Producer and host of his specials on social media based on his magic books of the same name, Dr. Michael, Magic Mike Like He is also a clinical hypnotherapist and doctor of theocentric psychology. Having performed more than 250 shows a year in the mid-80s and 90s, he also produced and starred in the world's longest regularly produced TV shows in Winnipeg, Canada for nine years and guested regularly on broadcast television and starred in a medieval feast for ten years. Star of stage and television, Magic Mike Likey performs illusions large and small and will teach you the secrets of the magical arts both in person and virtually. This is Magic Mike Likey. And we're back with magician Rod Chow, and we've have a, we've been having a great discussion, um, a little bit about COVID, and, um, a little bit more about. I'd like to get your take on the advantages and disadvantages to doing virtual magic, what they're calling virtual magic. To me, it's real magic. It's not virtual, but uh, as, as you know, through the computer, if you will, or um, through social media, because we're we're kind of forced right now to either be six feet away from our audiences. And I know a lot of magicians are doing some shows from a safe distance and or with masks and they're uh, making jokes or taking advantage of that and using that. But for all intents and purposes, we're playing it safe and we're working this way. How do you feel about working virtually, if you will, versus live audiences? Well, of course, nothing beats uh, being right there and performing close up magic for live audience. Uh, but the advantage of virtual magic is that you can reach a wider audience and you can reach people from all parts of the world. Uh, in fact, um, being uh, the national first vice president of the Society of American Magicians, I t have to attend a lot of meetings and I have to um, um, actually participate in these Zoom conferences or Zoom shows, right, where I normally would not be able to go physically out to that a location because of distance and because of maybe time, but over Zoom, um, I can actually do it. So Zoom does has have its advantages that you can participate in magic uh, meetings, you can do magic shows, and you can um, uh, show your magic to people that may not uh, have the ability to see you live. So um, I think it works at this time. Um, it would be, I mean, obviously there should be a combination of that when when live magic comes back. Um, uh, we're going to be doing it again live, and uh, we're going to uh, be just as good as before. And I think um, we can also have that uh, virtual magic uh, work together with it. Absolutely. There's so many advantages. Mm -hmm. I'm reaching broader audiences. Broader audiences are reaching us as well. I, I've never seen so many lectures that we'd have to pay good money for of uh, professional magicians, world-renowned magicians that, uh, that we're privy to thanks to, um, to virtual magic, to all of this. We're going to take a quick break and then Rod is going to come back and share a magic effect with us. So we'll see you all in a second. Enjoy Magic Mike Likey's animated cartoons, comic books, CDs and DVDs available from Amazon. He's also the author of more than 45 self-help alternative wellness books as well as instructional magic books, all available from Amazon. Published in International Magicians Trade Journals, Magic Mike Likey is a member of the International Brotherhood of Magicians and the Society of American Magicians. And we're back with magician Raw Chow, who's kindly agreed to visit uh, the show this day. Raw. You brought with some magic. I, I actually, before you do that, you're actually live. We're, we're, we're pre-recording, but you're live from the world's, now let me see if I can get this correct, the world's narrowest building? 
Yes, it's actually the world's narrowest building. It's in Guinness Book of Records. It's only four feet ten inches wide by a whole block long. So it's very famous to have uh, tourists from all over the world come and visit us here. Absolutely. This is where I work. I actually work out of this building. Exactly. I love it. And we've had SAM meetings. I've attended SAM meetings. Maybe because I'm not a big fellow, like I'm not over six feet, I feel comfortable in that space. You perfectly, Mike. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I love it. And it's cozy and it lends a fantastic atmosphere. Now, Rod isn't the kind of person to brag. But he's turned this into a beautiful, it's almost a Vegas style Mecca, if you will. There's flashing lights and chaser lights uh, outside and, and indoors built into the glass floors. And it's gorgeous. If you're in Vancouver, Canada area, you have to come visit him in Chinatown. It's uh, it, especially at night, just walking past the building, you can't miss it. It's gorgeous. Uh, I, I had to share that with our audience. It's actually true. It's international award winning light. So that actually uh, uh, played, a big part in the, uh, uh, played a big part in designing the show. And when people come here, uh, it was actually very magical as well. So if they come here for specifically for a tour, I actually will give them a magical tour. So it's really, oh, fantastic. It's fantastic. Now, I understand you have something to share with us. Um, Ron, I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing this. Well, Mike, um, you know, the world is feeling a bit broken right now in more ways than one. We must remain physically apart, even limit gatherings with family, and we cannot travel abroad. Some of us must even remain in isolation. But back in the day, we actually didn't even have this platform where we could actually communicate over Zoom or Facebook. So I think this is what we have today that keeps us all together. Whoa. <laughs> so we have to learn to adapt to new norm. Uh, we have to remain strong, and if we do so, we might even gain from the experience. No way! Wow! <laughs> you know, stay safe, keep strong, everyone. Perfect. Oh my goodness, I love it, and I love that stay strong. Um, a slogan that you use. I've seen it somewhere. I think it's a video on YouTube and that moved me. Yeah. That actually moved me. I, I thought it's very special, not just during this time, but for all times, really, bringing everybody together and uh, we all need that. Um, Rod, how can people get in touch with you if they want to book a show or uh, talk magic? Um, what's your website address and any other ways they can contact you? Uh, my website is rodchow.com, and I also have a Facebook fan page, which is Rod Chow Magic. Perfect. Perfect. Um, you can't imagine how much I appreciate your visiting us this day. You, you really add so much. You add so much when you do a magic show. You add so much when you come and visit us. It's, it's, it's a great honor to have you. And um, I'm hoping you'll come visit us again sometime. Thank you, Mike. I was really great to be on your show. Thank you. And I want to thank everyone out there for joining us as well this day. Hopefully we'll see you all very soon. Thank you.